365 in the Horror Shed podcast, Ryan Inman, and the guest of honor, this way, this way, down there somewhere. <laughs> it's like a bit. I never know which way I'm supposed to point to. That's it. That's the one. Ken Sagos, Ken Kincaid in the yes. house. Hey, what's up, what guys? How you doing? What did you say? That's it, brother, how you feeling? I'm feeling well. It's almost the end of the year, and I'm ending it out with a bang and coming in with a super bang. There you yes. go. That's it. That's it, man. Right on, right on. All right. So let's see. Is anybody on here yet? Nobody on here yet, but they'll be, they'll, the people will dwindle in as a, the show goes. we got a couple people watching, but nobody's commenting yet. All right. So so we got Kincaid, star of Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4. Also, uh, let's see, uh, Michaela's on. Okay. <laughs> so we got somebody. <laughs> All right. So, um, Jared, you want to you want to start and ask uh, Ken a question? We got some a couple other people come on, uh, coming in. So, what we're going to do is just start with this interview. Talk a little bit of Nightmare on Elm Street. We're going to talk about Ken Ken K, you know, Ken Segos's upcoming project, uh, Socrates. Yes, Socrates, a go. comic book and a feature film coming out soon. The comic book is out. We'll put his website on the page. It's on the page already. You can go there and order some stuff. We're going to start with the interview. We'll start with Jared. Jared, you got a question for Ken, and then we'll just kind of. I do. I I kind of want to start at the beginning. When did the acting bug hit you? When did you decide you wanted to be an actor? When I came out of my mother. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Really? (laughs) I just came out loud. (laughs) (laughs) Not you. No. My my first ass spanking. I, I, you know what? I, I I I don't really know, but I know that when I was very young, I always enjoyed being the funny one in the classrooms. And so back then, we used to do things like pantomiming, pretending that we was groups on the corner and stuff. And so then um, <laughs> I played Joseph in a, in a Christmas play. Oh, right on. Yeah, you know, and I remember one time they was just, we never had to say any lines, so I was saying, Do Joseph talk? You know, so <laughs> <laughs> so that was, it started very early. It started very early. Now I come from a very religious family, so horror was not in the mix. Right. Oh, like, yeah. Funny how life takes you down different paths. Yep. I, I heard a story because I was doing my research for this. So I've been checking out every podcast I could find you ever did. And I heard a story you were telling, and I was driving, so I couldn't 100% pay attention to it. But I think it was when you were debating whether or not to take Nightmare and you were speaking to somebody, an old, older woman that you knew that was at church. Old church woman. Um. <laughs> I knew her. I I, I I I don't know her right age, so I, I know she was in her eighties to nineties, somewhere along there. And um, so, because I guess you were conflicted about taking it because of your religious yeah. background and things, and people yeah. were giving you a hard time. The pastor didn't want me to do it, so I called, which I called the Kermit Bell. I called her, and this lady always had a Bible in her hand. She. She wore a white coconut hat or a white, uh, everything was white. Even her stockings was white and she had a mm-hmm. white. Bible. So when I called her, 
she said, yes, baby. And then she just said, well, I told her what was going on. And I said, and she said, well, uh, let me put my Bible down so I can listen to you. And so all she said was, does it pay, baby? <laughs> yeah, ma'am. And she said, fuck them. <laughs> So, see, I'm picturing this in my head while I'm driving. I lost my shit, yeah, man. Was, I never <laughs> forgot that. You know, my mom at the time, when I kind of like told her, she was okay with it. She was okay. So, yeah, yeah. you know, because it's acting, you know, it's, you know, it's a totally different thing. Right on. Um, let's see. Let's and then a year later, mm -hmm. a year later, about a couple of years later, I went back to the church and I was going to give some money. And, you know, she was sitting down front. They heard that I was there and she told me to come down and sit with her. You know, the pastor was preaching and she was being saying, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. And then she reached over and she said, don't you give this church not one red nickel <laughs> with the money. They, they said it was the devil's money, so you don't bring no devil money in this church. But you are going to take me out for supper. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that was a great story. I really liked. I really liked hearing that. That's good. So, um, so nightmare was your was your first um your your first big gig then, right? Oh no, no you, you wrote um you wrote for um Laverne and Shirley before that, right? You really did some history. Didn't you? I, I did. <laughs> oh, wow. so, well, you gotta see how old I am. Anyway, I. I actually was a staff writer, you know, for Paramount Television before I got into acting. Uh, I didn't go out to be a writer, but I ended up by writing a scene um, at a comedy showcase, mm -hmm. and Gary Marshall people was there. And you know, you know, a year before that, man, I was back in Atlanta in college. And when we came home, we watched Laverne and Shirley and Happy Days. So it was a year later, because I was a security guard. So mm -hmm. when Gary Marshall's office called me and she said, hold on for Gary Marshall, I'm thinking there's some friends in Georgia playing a trick on me. Yeah. So I said, hello. And he said, <laughs> Ken! And I said, yes. Yeah. I said, Gary, right? He said, yeah. I said, well, hold on, okay? And then I just hung up the phone and went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I worked from like 11 to 7 in the morning at security. And then I, by the time I got home, all I think about was going to sleep. And Gary Marshall, please, come on. <laughs> I got a call back from my uh, agent who told me that was the real Gary Marshall. So, and he laughed about it. So, <laughs> the thing I know, I had my, I was started off as an apprentice writer. Actually, it was Joni Love Chachi. And then I went from Joni Love Chachi to um, Laverne and Shirley. And after Laverne and Shirley, I did some time over it, was uh, Happy Days. Oh, wow. really? Then, for like a lot of our younger viewers or listeners listening or watching, Gary Marshall was the heaviest hitter of hitters in production back in those days. Oh yeah, oh, that was, yeah. he was the guy. He was a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> he was a big guy, just to be associated with him. He he was the TV version of like in the eighties, like Spielberg calling you for a film. Yeah. 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 So, Kim, what year did you go to Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 let me rephrase it so you don't have to you don't have to put your age out there. How old were you when you went to Hollywood? How about that? How old were you? Than, that's worse than when I went there. <laughs> oh, oh, um I first came to Hollywood to visit in 79. Then I went back and then I came back and I got a job as a security guard at Universal Studios. Mm -hmm. And you who the first celebrity I met? Who's that? The great Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, oh wow. right on. My name is a giant Alfred Hitchcock fan. Yeah, one of my heroes. And, you know, and he encouraged me. And what I liked about working at Universal Studios as a security guard, we was, um, as a guard, when we went through the stages, if they were filming, we had to stop. We couldn't go out. We couldn't do anything. 
So I always made it a point to be in one of the studios when they was filming. And because I couldn't afford to go to classes or anything. So I learned from the greats. I learned from Shirley Jones, from, um, you know, uh, uh, Jack Klugman. I'm sure you know. Who oh, did. Jack Klugman, yeah. You know what he did for me? He found out that I was out there by myself. So he made sure that every day that they was filming Quincy, that the caterer had to bring me a plate of food every day. Oh, hell yeah. Now, hell yeah, that's good that they looked out like that. I didn't talk, I never really talked to that man. And then Tennis Violet, um, Kojak, Kojak, <laughs> let me, um, take his class and then i took a class for was that, he let you take his Mother. class was that before or after you uh dented up his rose race oh you know about all you <laughs> <laughs> that was afterwards but i i don't think i dented it but you know I, I was working at the main gate and you know i was just a innocent young man that was out here country i had a deep southern accent still do but <laughs> And, you know, and I was just real, you know, I, I had a dream. They saw the dream and yeah. they, you know, they wanted to at least clear a path for me to walk down the uh, steps for the dream. So um, in my early, early years out here, those was my teachers, you know, um, and did I, uh, like with Alfred Hitchcock, it was just a conversation, but when I was in his, in his bungalow, you know, he could have easily said, get out. He just said, take your time and, and don't give up, you know. Um, and then I went to meet Edith Head. I know y'all don't know who Edith Head is. Right? No, we don't know I that know, one. We I don't know, know who that is. I know oh, who. he knows who it oh. is. Okay. She, um, she was a costume designer for Alfred Hitchcock. Damn, I'm glad I ain't betting no money on you. But, <laughs> Shit, nice but, pool, Ryan. But, yeah, but <laughs> she had, that. Actually, she, let me let me rephrase that. She was the costume designer. The for costume. The costume. <laughs> yes. She had eight Oscars right there. Yeah. And oh, I, yeah. And I was looking at them, and she was behind me. She said, you can touch it. Thank God, you know, I didn't eat no beans that day. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> she said, you can touch it, you know. And so she let me pick up the Oscar. And, you know, she was right there. So how they was for me when I went inside sometimes was different when I saw them out there in the public. Like, you know, like, like I said, like, um, I met them all. Joan Rivers saved my job. You really? Know? Yeah. Oh, Joan Rivers. I, I, I would never forget Joan Rivers. I should have. She went back upstairs and she told them to um, leave me some choice words alone. And then when she came back, she said, we told that tramp, didn't we? I was trying to say, I thought I had the letter right here. I was going to bless you all with that letter. But Joan Rivers saved my job, you know, um, met, you know, oh, I met uh, Lucille Ball who grabbed me. And as you can see, where I am. That's from Joan, Joan Rivers, The Late Show. That's oh, sweet. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So uh, I would never forget, she wrote me. Uh, you know, I know you all can't see it, but I, I, I'm yeah. excited about it. I see the say. signature, though. We can make that out. Okay. So she wrote me because she saved my job. She went back up there and told them, I don't know what she told me. When she left that day, she said, we told that tramp, didn't we? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that where I am in my life, you know, along my journey, I've had some old legends of yesterday to give me a few fine words. And that's why I try to give back and I try to want to write some good stories. I remember Miss Ruby D and Mr. R.Z. Davis, you know, they had said something years ago. When I met them to write something for them. And that meant going in there writing some stories that had levels, no bullshit. Don't get me wrong, because I like bullshit. I need a bullshit <laughs> job right now. <laughs> Cause they pay better, you know. But you know, so that's true. 
Right on. So, Jared, Jared, you got another question there? Sure. Uh, I'll just bring that back up. <clears throat> so, we've heard in a few uh, podcasts. Can you tell us the audition story for Nightmare 3? Oh, this is a great one. <laughs> Anybody in the comments that haven't heard this, you're going to love it. <laughs> oh, Nightmare 3. I had never heard of Nightmare on Elm Street, as I said before. And so um, my agent called and told me he wanted me to go in to meet the casting director for Nightmare 3. Now, I don't know if you all realize, but back then there was a breakdown that went down that told all the the um, agents what they was looking for. And so when they got mm -hmm. to Kincaid, first of all, Kincaid was white. Mm -hmm. first I white. can't even picture that. You know. And so <laughs> they, uh, they made it black. And so, but they said he had to be a real build, you know, you know. And I was reading the breakdown and looking in the mirror at my fat ass and saying, <laughs> why am I there? You know. <laughs> so, so, so the next day I had to go, and I'm telling you guys, it was raining. It was like he was just pouring a pitch of water over everybody. And where I had to go to audition was was way east of where I was staying. That and I had to go to court that morning. Mm -hmm. I, to go east. I had to go to court. You know, I had a big ticket actually too. But anyway, I had tickets. And I was, and then what the audition was, was way out near the, in Beverly Hills, that's where it was. So I lost the court case. So now I got to get on this bus and go all the way over there. So I had a plan. I get to the audition. The bus get there at 3.50. Uh, the audition is like at 4.20. Go in there, wrap that booger out, and then I can get on that there, that 4.45 bus, right? That was a plan. It's raining. I'm already, I'm wet now. <laughs> but when I got there, they was running an hour behind. So I was pissed off then. And all those guys in the head on them tight shirts showing their body. You know, I had, what you call them, uh, a six pack. I had one pack. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> one pack, you know. And they were just walking around, you know, and everything. So anyway, I went in. By the time I went in, guys, I had an attitude. I didn't care. I really didn't care. And I told Chuck Russell, black guy won't say this shit. <laughs> you know? And he said, say it how you would say it. Mm -hmm. So I just got rid of some of my frustration. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Cast his ass out. So, you know. <laughs> so, you know, so when I got home, that was back there when they had those big, you know, ounce machines. Those Yeah. With know, the tape and everything. Yeah. Yeah, the tape. You hear it. <laughs> so, you know. Wasn't so, even digital. <laughs> it was ringing. And so, I mean, it was like 60 something calls or something. It was like, Every time it hang up, it was raining. It was ringing. So I answered the phone. It was my agent. He said, Kenny. Now, for the record, I don't like nobody calling me Kenny. But I didn't give a shit that day. You can call me. <laughs> he said, Kenny. And he said, what did you do? And I said, David, I told you I didn't want to go. And I told you not to send me. And he said, they love you. <laughs> <laughs> You got it, you know. So that's how. I, and then that's when I had to tell my family, and it got out, and that's when that is pre to the old lady. Yes, yes, yes. I, I wasn't going to take it. I wasn't going to take it. But you imagine, go ahead, imagine, Brad. imagine if you'd won those court cases, and it wasn't raining, and you weren't in a bad mood. You yeah. might not have history would have been different. Yeah, because I really it's, didn't. I literally didn't care, and I just didn't think I didn't have a bat's asshole of a chance <laughs> getting this role. I just didn't. Well, that because I think that that's what that part definitely needed was the attitude yeah. and aggression yeah. that you brought to it. And um, 
obviously they seen that when you were they're already already pissed off and they're like this is a guy and it makes makes total sense because that that character had to have that because I, I literally didn't want to be there and mm -hmm. I didn't care and based on the breakdowns of that character it didn't fit me so why am I here but I found out later that um, my agent wanted me to meet the casting director for something down the line. Mm. Yeah. But, but it worked out because you ended up getting that part. It worked out. You know, and then, I, and then, I, I, I yeah. never didn't know what Nightmare on Elm Street was. And the next day I was on the bus and I was told somebody about Nightmare on Elm Street. Everybody knew about it but me. Yeah. <laughs> you see, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, were you into horror at all? I know I've been like a horror now. I, I, the birds, I like the birds. God. And, and I, I, I like Blackula back in the black exploitation mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. But I just hadn't watched it. You know, I'm not going to say I didn't like it. I'm just saying that I, I enjoyed dramatic adventure type movies. I love a movie that got a good villain. Mm. Um, good villain. That's my whole thing. See, I would imagine too, with the religious background coming. From the south you probably weren't exposed to horror much as a young man no i i wasn't but you know I, but you know you know you ain't got no business going like horror porn <laughs> yeah 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 for sure for sure i would have been lying saying i was 19 when i was 16. <laughs> no, no <laughs> nobody would ever do that <laughs> <laughs> I remember I went in and I never saw something like that before. And I got all scared and ran out of the theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for my, my daughter, she, her favorite horror movie is Psycho. She doesn't like slashers. So she doesn't like the Nightmare on Elm Street, none of that. But she really likes Psycho and Exorcist. So for Christmas, she got um a 4K Alfred Hitchcock box set. And in, in it is The Birds. And we're going to sit down and watch that. She hasn't seen it, neither have I. Believe that still blows my mind. I know. So we have it. We have it. It came with Bird. He, he awesome. hasn't. I've seen it. I about, haven't seen the birds. I've seen it about 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But I have it on 4K, or my daughter does. She got it for Christmas. So and I got me a, a 75 inch TV down here in the room that I'm in. So we're gonna get down here. We got a popcorn machine. We're gonna watch the birds. Probably not tonight, probably tomorrow. But um you certainly is a Jason fan, right? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> See, so this guy, my, my Dream Warriors shirt yeah. on, though. Yeah. <laughs> this guy right here and this guy right here, we're typically more Friday the 13th guys. That guy right that there. That guy's though, the biggest Nightmare Elm Street fan in history. <laughs> however, however, that guy there and this guy here both think that Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 is the best one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We did a ranking episode and um, yeah. you know, one for well, it, every it's everybody's favorite. It wasn't mine. It was, spoiler alert! It was my second favorite. No, you had it three. Three. I had it three be, behind um New Nightmare, the first one, and then yeah. this one. But those change all the time. Th those those are easily the three best. Yeah. And um, most people agree with them that three was the easily the best nightmare movie. What yeah. three and four make the most money? Yep. <laughs> I guess that makes them the best, don't it? But I'm not bragging, but I was in those. <laughs> hey. That's funny because that actually uh, that reminds me of something else I heard you say once, and I want to know if this was true. <laughs> I heard you. Oh, um, I know this. I know where he's going. Yeah. In part four, <laughs> in the scene where you get killed off, you said you started crying, and Robert England went to console I'm you, and you cry. said. And you said, I'm not crying because I died. I'm crying because it's my last check. My last check. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, it's true. I mean, come on. You know? It's cold out there. You know? Yeah, I've always had a sense of humor. You know? That's amazing. You know? Oh, yeah. You, you, yeah. Yeah, you're hilarious. <laughs> you know, Robert saying, you know, Kenny, I'm going to miss you, Kenny. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And, and as much as I, I definitely like part three a lot more than I like part four. And I'm, I'm not Thank the minority you, totally in lie. that opinion. But uh, that shot of you going, Freddy's back, and the camera pans up is so amazing. Yeah. You know, 
But but I will say this on the um that last day it was somewhat emotional for these two men, you know, Robert and myself, because you know, I didn't know if I was gonna see him again. I, yeah. I really didn't, you know. I, I didn't know that um nightmare was going to continue. But then I heard later in years that, you know, um, you know, my character say, I see you in hell. Yes. Mm -hmm. They was considering bringing me back to have a confrontation with uh, Freddie. And that's what I heard. I never saw a script. However, I did see a script where all the Dream Warriors came back and we was like the something patrol. Yes, yeah. Dream P Patrol or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was um, the original script for Six. And that would have been way better than what they actually made. <laughs> I don't say that. <laughs> Poor Jason. <laughs> he said That's he was right. kissing is... fire the dog. <laughs> do, you think it, do, you, do you think it was kind of a rib that they named the dog Jason in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie? Obviously. Yeah, obviously. I think yeah. I think that was the whole point. Yeah. You know, and as a writer now, I understand it. You know, that's yeah. what I did in some of the writings that I did, you know. Mm -hmm. Came through, you know. I think there's a new post out for Socrates. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, I don't, I don't think I had it in here. Right on, right on. So, let's see. Speaking of Socrates, Socrates is um what you're working on right now, right? With the uh, you have a comic book out for it that you can get from the website, which is um what is it? What is your website? I, I have it on my page, but I don't have it in front of me. My website is www the Sagos Company, one word, dot com. That's it, the Sagos Company dot com. And you guys can all go on there, and he has some great deals where you can get a, 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 a copy of the comic book that he made that we're trying to get made into a movie. You can get posters from the movie, yes, pieces from the movie. There's a comic book right there. Uh, yeah, I was looking for a picture of it, but you got it from me there. Um, yeah, and he has um. All very reasonably reasonably priced, and Ken will sign this stuff for you, send it to you, and we're going to be giving away one on the show. And uh, but um, definitely go to the the, the sagoscompany.com and check that out. Um, I thought I had something, but I guess not. Yeah, check that out and um, order something. He has a thing where you could donate some cash, and we want to get this movie made because it looks really really interesting. What what? So what's the Basic premise, I guess, behind Socrates. What well, Socrates is is a, about a African gray parrot, and those are the most intelligent birds around. They they are considered to be the geniuses in the bird wor world. They are, you know, the Einstein. And as a matter of fact, there is a bird called Einstein. And so, it, it, here's yes, a picture of him. Yeah. It, it goes back to uh, actually before to slavery. And what happened is that during slavery, when they came over and captured some of the slaves, one of those kids was the son of a voodoo king. And he put a spell on the son's pet, which was a African gray parrot, mm -hmm. to travel and watch over him. Well, you fast forward that the last guardian of the bird saw that the bird was getting too evil and because it was absorbing all the history that it saw and oh yeah so, so he buried the bird and so now some school some college uh students who's working on their master stumbled across this here old uh urban legend and they went and dug it up and they mm -hmm. dug it up so now Socrates is out to get revenge on, he can't get revenge on the people who caused those, those, those things, but he can get revenge on the ancestors, descendants of them. So that mm -hmm. means nobody is safe. He's after the descendants of slave owners. He's after the descendants of slaves who wouldn't help the other slaves. So in other words, nobody is safe. From Socrates, and he's basically just a bird that's looking for love. And when he gets angry, 
his talents grow out like razors. And oh, right on. Red. So this is a tribute to Alfred Hitchcock. It's a tribute to Wes Craven. It's a tribute to um, uh, William Marshall, who played Blackula back in the um, Black Exploitation days. So this is a tribute. And it's a wonderful story. And, you know, and, but everybody loves him, but he can, he has a problem with being around people who are cold hearted and he's a protector of children and he talks. And by the way, I'm doing the voice of it. So oh, nice. I love me. I love me. I love me more. Yeah. Oh, you know, um, so you got so, Charles Sherrod in the comments. He says, interesting story. Time for some original stuff that doesn't piss on the old stuff. And I agree. That's why when I when I seen this, I was so impressed with it. Just being a totally total original idea. We don't we don't have those in, in movies, period. Very Let alone the horror genre. Everything's a remake, a reboot. Let's take this and redo this. This is like nothing, no, nothing I've ever heard. So it's a right. total um Oh, thanks. So uh, Rose the Theory, and she says hey, I'm subscribing to you. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's like it's totally new and totally different. And that's what we need is something fresh. So I really, really want to everybody to help get this thing made by ordering a comic book or ordering an autograph poster from Ken. And uh, I mean, it, you, you'll have a Ken Kate autograph, and you'll be doing your part to help get this thing made. Yeah, yes, the autograph. It's uh, okay. The, the first fifty. People, I'm going to have an auction to give you all this. This is a really steel parrot. Oh, it's very yeah. cool. Yeah, that goes on the wall. And you got some wonderful comic books that's, uh, I mean, posters that's going with this here. And I like this story because, like I said, I used to be a staff writer for comedy, but I won an uh, Emmy, a uh, cable ace Emmy for writing a Disney film, which was a drama. So now I'm doing a horror, which I like. I did not know that I was going to be so embedded in writing this horror. So I have a touch of all of the horror films together because I believe in giving homage. And right so um, I believe I, I don't want to do another a remake of a horror film because right. I think you're, you're watering down the brilliancy of some of those other writers. So I wanted to create my own villain, which is Socrates. So Brian Emanizer, South Jersey Jason, he had a question. He wanted to know if it's going to be an animated film or live action. It's going to be live action. One of the reasons that we have to raise some substantial amount of money is because we, I want, we have to get a CGI have to come mm -hmm. forward because I want it to look real. I do not want it to look like a Muppet talking. Mm -hmm. I want it to look real. And right. right and right now I do have a little uh a production company that's interested and they are willing to possibly do something to show a teaser because we eventually we're gonna have a Indiegogo for me. But I want people to see it right. I want people to see that you know, that we need, I need to raise this money. So the first thing is I'm doing this comic book and giving some great, great uh, deals with the comic books. You'll be able to hear the actor that's actually going to play the lead role in the film. He's a wonderful young actor. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that this time in two or three years, he's going to be a major star. He's such a young talent. And I also have a lot of other young talent there that um that's going to be there you know i come from you know the era like well the dream warriors so this is like the dream warriors doing their thing but socrates is not to be played with and i pattern the lead in there after ken ken k so you're gonna get some ken k up in there <laughs> some fresh ken k because i wrote it you know so that's awesome. So, but it's a fresh story. It's a new story. And it's not a bloody, bloody thing. It's, um, you're going to love it because the bird is just funny. <laughs> now Socrates hurt you back. 
Yeah, that does seem, um, as far as budget goes, the CGI aspect does seem like it would. It would be. You could get crazy, be the right? biggest cost. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the thing is, I you know, I believe that it can be done. I, mm -hmm. I and I know it can be done. I look back at um, Nightmare Four. Um, they did that movie for 4.5 million, I believe. Oh, and really? so um, I think that this movie can be done in that realm. And I think it will be a big hit because the young talent that I'm uh, attaching to this here is really phenomenal. And they really make you feel that you're really there. So. I, I believe that Socrates has embodied a lot of uh, comedy uh, movies, you know, um, and it's something that you're going to all be able to relate to and all and everything with this here. And Socrates is number one. I, you know what I found out, guys? I found out that there is actually a African gray <laughs> group. <laughs> I and seen I, that. I, I seen your post on there today. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so I've been in touch with them. So I just need anything. If you just buy the comic book, because I'm getting ready to write uh, part two now. So this comic book is going to be a collector's item. It's the first. It's the beginning. It's the birth of Socrates. Right you know? on. Um, yeah. Um, now, yeah. I see. I seen so your post. Ryan and jo uh, Jared. Yes. I'm, I'm looking for your order. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't make me. Don't we're we're going to get you some orders for sure. Oh, yeah. Between us and Charles Sherrod, I had the comment on the screen a minute ago. Ryan, so, so Ryan whenever I want to know something, I'm calling you. You seem to be <laughs> <laughs> he, This guy does have a lot of knowledge. Yes. You know, I <laughs> he has a very good a, memory. Yeah, He's a I great big Twilight Zone fan. Good. He could tell you about every episode. I do, and it's weird that you mentioned Twilight Zone because when he mentioned both Jack Klugman and Telly Savalas, they both starred in episodes of the Twilight Zone. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that Twilight Zone's already been in my head tonight. So, <laughs> but you know, I played Jordy, and they did a bit on Night Court. Oh yeah, uh, loved that show as a kid. Yeah, bing me up. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Emanizer, he uh, he says you have his order coming soon. He ordered dog tags and bookmarks from you previously. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, he did. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> South Jersey That's, Jason. Yep. That is the South Jersey Jason, a.k.a. the handsome diner guy. A.k.a. the <laughs> handsome diner guy. <laughs> he's an he's a actor himself. He was yeah. in, he was in um his friend made made a Friday the Thirteenth film and put him in it as a as a guy holding a coffee cup in a diner and it's just been like a running joke ever since. <laughs> like I got above me, I got a picture of him from the movie like a a, a headshot. <laughs> and he, yeah, and it, it, he he's such a big star, he big time he so much it that he didn't even bother to sign it. I know, mine's not signed either, and he's my <laughs> podcast partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does the horror shed podcast with Jared, which they're gonna I'm sure they're gonna help promote this on there. Oh, and yeah. um Charles Sherrod, I had his comment on the screen. He's good he, he had me um inbox him your website info and he goes live tonight at eight o'clock on his show and he's gonna talk about it on his show tonight. All right, we can and, and I come on his show too. I'm doing whatever I have <laughs> yeah, to he'll 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 message you, reach out to you. I'm sure he'll have you on. Yeah. Um Probably not tonight, because <laughs> oh, he, no, no, he, yeah, he goes on about 15 minutes before we're off the air, you know? Right. So, yeah, I got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but I'm sure Charles would love to have you on. He, uh, yeah, He's a big big nightmare guy, big horror guy, too. Yeah. yeah. He said he'll send one to Ken signed, Brian did. <laughs> Brian, Brian, he's, Brian said he'll send you one of those headshots signed. We're not good enough to get a no, signed one. He, he only big he only <laughs> big times people he really knows. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, this guy. Now all of you are not in uh, Ohio, right? No, I'm in um, South Jersey. Mm -hmm. Me, me, and Ryan are in Ohio, but Ryan's not from Ohio. Ryan's from um, Florida. Yeah. What part of Florida? A popka, a little town outside of Orlando. Yeah, I know what it is. Really? All right. <laughs> See, we both know a lot. Then. <laughs> Isn't it close to the uh, the borderline of Georgia? Is it? Is some? No, it's down. It's down near Orlando, yeah. Central Florida. Yeah. Okay. 
So we used to go fishing down there, it, Pensacola or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, we that's where I was. My grandma and them, they used to get on this bus on Friday night, drive all night, go fishing on Saturday, and then we come back, you know. You know, I used, used to hate that, you know. <laughs> yeah, Florida. Dang it. Oh, I don't. Oh, I don't like Florida anymore. I don't even like to go visit. Well, I, I didn't want to bring that up. I didn't want to bring that up. But, oh, that's okay. I don't like it there either anymore. <laughs> should go to Florida and make us a shut up. Shut up. <laughs> so, um, Jared, did you have any more um, questions on there about nightmare or about anything? Uh, yeah, I, I got one. One more here. All right. Mm -hmm. So. When did you find out they were ruining Nightmare Four by killing you and Rodney off so early? <laughs> I know. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask that too. <laughs> um, well, you asked that because I wanted to hear his um his, his um answer to that too. When did we find out? You know, it's look <clears throat> as a um, African American actor. You know, when we see the horror films. We automatically look for the in the first five or six pages, you know. <laughs> we knew the first to go anyway. So, but you know, when I did part three, you know, I kept turning pages and turning pages, and I said, "Oh, they're not gonna give me this." And turning pages, and I went to the end, and I said, "What the fuck?" <laughs> you know. So, um, when they did part four, the writers was on strike. Yeah. So they didn't have a script. Um, what they did was they had a meeting, um, Ronnie Hyman, he had a meeting with me and Rodney. We didn't know at the time that uh, Patricia Arquette was not coming back. Mm -hmm. I think if Patricia Arquette had came back, we would have not been killed off so quickly. I agree. When she did not come back and they replaced her with... Um, Choose tonight, who did a wonderful job, wonderful, wonderful job, and beautiful lady. And um, uh, they decide to get rid of the old and just bring in the new, the new. Lady. Because I always felt that I had a great death scene, but I just think it should have been a little larger, a little longer for me and Freddie having a, a battle. Yeah. That, you know that you know that he couldn't just grab me and just kill me like that. Oh, oh no, motherfucker, he ain't gonna be like that. <laughs> okay, what? See, I want him. He brought out his razors, and I brought out some Lee press on nails. Bring your motherfucker on here. We, we, okay, we got this. You know, but, but I wasn't writing the script. <laughs> you know. So, um, Brian. Has a question in the comments. He says, "If um, Nightmare on Elm Street three was to be remade, who do you think? I know I definitely should not do it. First of all, but if somebody did do it, who does Ken think Kincaid should be played by?" Um, honestly, you want to know? Yeah. The well, that's young, how we ask. The, uh, well, you know, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> how? First of all, I think if they brought three back. They should give all the Dream Warriors a cameo by us being the parents of those. Yeah. Oh, something. yeah, that'd be cool. That's right. Okay. But if I had to say who I would want to play Ken K, honestly, the young man, uh, Francis uh, Edemobi, who's doing my short film of Socrates, I think he would be. The best I think part. I got. I think I got a picture of the the gentleman here. Let's see. That's yeah. him right there, right, Ken? Right. right. All right. And that's a that that the yeah. right on. Yeah. No, I seen um I seen the interview that you had or the little um two three minute video you had on. You guys check that out at the sagroscompany dot com. He's got a little little interview with the actor that's going to be um in in the film. And yeah, he he seemed like he'd be a great choice. He'd have to bulk up a little bit though. <laughs> you, know, you know, but his personality, his talent, I don't think you can find anyone better than him. So I, I, I'm not about going with the names, but mm -hmm. going. Oh, for sure. You know, because at the time I didn't have a name. So, 
Mm -hmm. um, but I would use some of those bigger leagues in there with the names. But yeah, that's so. I hope that answers your question. So that's that's what it, it is. I, right. Every one of those young people that I have, if I do the the, the uh, feature film, can stand on their own. And I think that I think that horror fans, you know, sometimes they think they go to a movie to just see horror. But they also go to see some damn good acting. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, so, well, for me, I mean, I, I like some bad horror movies that have horrible acting, but I like the good acting yeah. too. Well, in night <laughs> if I'm paying Day. money to go to the theater, I want a good story and a good acting. If I'm sitting at home eating popcorn, it could be just about anything, and I'll I'll dig it. Well, right. Nightmare yeah. Three, you guys definitely had a lot of good actors in that film, yep. as far as especially yeah. from a horror movie standpoint. Oh you know? wow, yeah. Look at I mean, um, Lawrence Fishburne, Fishburne uh, what they went Fish on to, you know, some heavy hitters yeah. in three. Those heavy hitters, and they all was good. Uh, and I learned so much by working on that film. That was Patricia yeah. Arquette's first film too, and you could tell that she had something. Yeah. Yeah, like right away. Yeah. Oh, everybody that was there, and so with my working on Socrates, I think that I'm pulling a lot of the um attitudes and what it takes to make a film for how I felt on that set, you know. Uh all of us as actors, what Chuck um Russell did before we went to film filming, he um took us all out. We had two gatherings where we just got to know each other. So one of the first film uh scenes that we shot was the scene where we was in the um, in the hospital around the table where I say, fuck you, you sit down. <laughs> so we all, we wasn't just actors then, we was friends. And I credit Chuck Russell and that brilliant, well, most people, uh, uh, directors that come from some form of stage, that's what they want to do. They, they want you to be able to more than just come on the set and do it but get to know each other because we all had to come together and that made us come together, you know? And I think that's one of the things that I want to do with Socrates is that bring everybody together. The two young men that you saw was two young men that they got together before we shot that film. So we was able to tease it. So we was able to just shoot it just like that. Even the bird, Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> We got a so, professional so, bird. So, so do you, have you shot a short of the movie yet? No, I'm raising money for the short and hope that the parlay into hope that it gets picked up into a feature. Okay. I, what I, have I was going to say, where do I see that? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, what I, I have shot is a teaser. Yeah. Okay. A four minute teaser to uh, for this here, and I'm hoping to bring the teaser out. In the beginning of March or the end of February, I just want to get my comic book out right now. Right. And then I'm going to bring that because I one of the reasons that I want to do podcasts and I want to talk to people. I want them to know that they're not just giving me money that I'm personally. I'm doing this to invest back into something because I want to be able to make an original film, horror film. And something that's new, that's fresh, not a, a remake. Mm -hmm. and make, and I think that I can do it with my connection, with my with my thoughts. And I know what I kind of like know what people like, you know. And this is a young, this is a family, young people story, if you want to say, you know. So yeah, and, really and it's the first where a bird is. The bird. <laughs> Bird, I, I I can see um, Socrates, you know, everywhere, you know. Right you don't much yet. Yeah, getting a short film to, uh, made can parlay into anything. That's how Saw yeah. started, and look at that franchise now. Oh yeah, yeah, it did. It did start as a short. It started as a short film, and he's and now movies deep. Eleven films later, right? Yeah, yeah. But if what, you count down the spiral. What film was that now? Saw. 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 Oh really? Yeah. So it all started as a short film, and right. like, now they've got 11, 11 movies. Right. Yeah. And then so, the, the 11th Saw movies coming out next Halloween, they already got a greenlit. 
Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and I and I'm I'm depending on my I'm I'm hoping that my horror fans would come through because they are a very loyal group. Oh, oh yes, they are. And that's why I want to talk about it and tell you what's going on and why I'm doing this here. And I did two other short films, and each one of those won over 200 awards alone. But I think this one, this one is going to be the bomb. It's, it's original, it's new, has adventure, has drama in it. It has everything in it. It reaches a lot of levels, a lot of situations, you know, uh, 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 child abuse, husband abuse. Hey, Socrates is right there. And, and at the end of the day, you don't know who he is. Yeah. And more importantly than that, too. I can just see how passionate you are about this just by the way you speak about it and putting that into this project is, yeah, that's everything. And, so and I can, you, I can just see in your face just that this is your passion project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's and, why and I have Ken, my Ken, good Brian, right here. Brian, uh, Brian says he just got worded the comic and the poster and he's friends with Corey who designed one of the posters. Yes. Corey's a, Corey is a very nice guy. He's gone. Yeah. And let me tell you something about that particular post. It's only going to be a hundred of those because we got to tweet it a little bit because I don't want to get sued. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear that here. Right on. So, okay, so my, my daughter's in the comments here and she says, how long did it take to film A Nightmare on Elm Street? I got to put her uh, comment on there just because we will give me shit for it later. Uh, it, it, I was on Nightmare 3. I had... Um, Three and a half weeks on there. Three and a half weeks. Yeah. And is that typical for most movies? Like for an actor, to, to be on about three, three and a half weeks. Is that it, normal it, or? It, it depends. Um, but um, I think it was a six-week movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but I had three and a half weeks, almost four, I think. But on Nightmare Four, I only had a week on there. Hmm. Right. I was, about, I was about to say, as little as you were in the movie, were you there? I, had, you were I, in I, had, I had a week and one day because we shot the whole, um, it took us a whole week to film the uh, junkyard scene. Oh, and yeah. That was, it's very yeah. complex. Yeah. Yeah. And then we came back and we did the interior, which was, which was one day. I actually have one more question about Nightmare 3 because it just popped into my mind the last time I watched it. Uh, the song you performed, you, you know, you were the performer of that song. Do you get residuals for that? Who performed that song? When you sang the song. What song? The Don't Want to Dream No More. <laughs> no. <laughs> no? <laughs> Trust me, if there's a way... I want back money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I that's a legit question. It's a legit question. I've heard actors getting hey, extra residuals for performing I didn't think songs. I, could, I didn't think I could ever hear an original question. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that before. I'm full of surprises. What can I say? Yes, you are. <laughs> you are. Right on, right on. Right on. Uh, let's see. Join late. My apologies. Oh, oh my, my slacker kid who's uh, j j my other kid. I got a million kids. I got too many of them. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he says, join late. So my apologies as this got brought up already. When you worked on the Sunny episode, it did not get brought up. So we're going to talk about it. Okay. When you worked on the Sunny episode, did you spend any time with DeVito and the rest of the cast? And what was that like? Um, That's my firstborn. He's... He, he wanted to ask that. No, I didn't. I spent a brief moment with DeVito. That was it. But um, I, and that, and it's because I had worked, when I was working at Paramount, Shields was there. So I knew his wife. I didn't know her, but we had talked. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we took time to talk about that. So, but it wasn't like a conversation. If I see him, he'll wave at me, but I don't think we, we don't, we ain't road dogs. You know, <laughs> I would like to be, but we're not road dogs. You know, we not, he's I like him because he's one of the few people that I can look down at. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, 
<laughs> I, I walk around. I just, what's your name, Kareem? What's yours? But <laughs> so, um, uh, but I didn't know any of the others. But we shot that in two days. I remember that. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I, yeah. I, like I said before, we went on. I think we were talking about Always Sunny, but um. Yeah, it's one of my favorite shows. It's it's so funny. I had no idea you were on it, and you were so great in that little scene. Like you had this like look, and it might not it might not have been acting. You might have just been like, "What the fuck is wrong with these people?" Because that's <laughs> what it kind of seemed like. That's right. I think that's why it was so good because you weren't acting. You were just like these people got fucking problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the way he grabs his drink too, and a little bit of it spills even when he yeah, picks it, it up. He's just like, I ain't got time for this shit. <laughs> I gotta watch that. I gotta, I gotta that's your watch. like that's your like closing line when you get up. You're like, I ain't got time for this shit. You pick your drink up so fast. Down the help like, little of it so crazy. Out. Yeah. My my son I, I says he watched the episode and thought the exact same thing I just said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Wait, I, I love that show. I remember when I did it. Like I said, I didn't know I've been doing a lot of shows that I don't know that they've been on. So <laughs> Uh, but, but no, it, it was fun. I, I can say there have not been any show that I've been on that I didn't enjoy. And that's basically just, you know, I go there and I enjoy what I do. You know, I try not to think about the pay because I mm. wouldn't enjoy what I do. But I, <laughs> I, I, I literally enjoy what I do. I enjoy the acting and I enjoy the writing. You know, and so that's why, as, as I parlay back, and that's why I think this is so good. It's because I got the elements. I've studied the elements. I've studied the elements of what people like, and I think I've been able to mix up a great formula that's going to make this real work. You know? Right on. So All I right. I to get my people to buy the books and buy those <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we're doing our best. But like I said, I saw, I, we saw at least one for you right there. <laughs> I, I don't know if you, you know that I, I have these. I don't know where this thing going. These but, oh, there you go. Oh, cool. Pins, yep. And you can get it, you can get a copy of the comic book, a poster, and a pin in the combo for what was it like? How how much was it? I don't want to say the wrong amount. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. That's what I thought. I mean and, and so, I autograph it. Yeah, and you'll autograph it for you. At the table at a convention, you pay that for an autograph, mm -hmm. so you might as well you get this book. Yeah, you, you, at, at the convention, you pay that. Right. I mean, that's what a donor aid, just about. And also so you, know that, you know, the cost, you know, you know, the shipping is much yeah. more than what I have down there. They just went up on it. They go up on um, mailing the first of the year. So yeah, that's, that's right. Big, that's a big thing. And I didn't know simply because I put this in there, that's five extra dollars. I think, you know, they, you know, but I would do what I have to do. <laughs> well, my wonderful book that you guys are going to enjoy. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to get that. You, you said mine went out yesterday, right? Yes. Awesome. I can't wait to get it. We'll talk about, we'll, we'll review it on the podcast and um, I'm going to order another copy to give away on the podcast for um, anybody that's on. And uh, so um, did either one of you guys have any more questions for Ken? I have a question. Has yes, a question. I think, uh, are you related to Jimmy? Uh, no. <laughs> Why are you no. saying it like that? No, it's just funny. Oh, because... oh, that Jimmy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a whole other story, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, it's just funny because it turned out we had the same last name. We're kind yeah. of the same area because he's from New York. And it, he, it's one G instead of G. And I'd never met him before until I met Brian. So, like, it was a funny <laughs> circumstance that his last name was Haggerty. Yeah, he, that's my buddy. That's my road dog. Yeah. Oh, he's helping me a lot on Socrates, by the way. Okay, I do. Breaking out of a nightmare cup. I do. Oh yeah, come on, this it, it's it's thirty years of collecting here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. I do remember there was at one point a Dream Warriors reunion convention in the works, but it it uh, ended up not to be. No, they had a decent one at um. 
I was speaking more of the one that the person with the same last name as you was promoting. Uh, no, there, this one was at um, Horrorhound. They had okay. a really big, good one. Do you remember that, yeah. Ken? Yeah, I, I remember that one. And it was, um, that was three years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so speaking of conventions, do you have any um, convention appearances coming up? No, I don't. I, I, I don't. I'm looking for some. I want to do some. Whatever I have to do to do what I do. So I am looking for some. I want to introduce the conventions to the short film, Socrates and everything. Um, and so I am looking for them. Oh, I'm yeah. sure you'll get offers. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Well, well, I think this is, isn't this like an anniversary year for Nightmare 3? Where you been? That was two years ago. What? Yeah. Two years ago. Time yeah. flies, man. I don't know. 35. 22. Yeah. Well, 35. 87. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, and this year is the 35th anniversary of Nightmare 4. Yeah, Nightmare 4. So we're back at the block again. We got to march up another five years. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sean says he's got to get Ken at Monster Mania, and yeah. um, Brian says NJ Horicon in April. Mm -hmm. I think Ken would do very well at a Monster Mania. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, Monster Man, you that's David, right? I don't know. I'm not really into this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. These guys, these guys, those Jersey guys, know more than we do. Yeah, it's uh, David. We got um, yeah. we got like one convention here in Cleveland, and I and it's I just now found out about it like last year. It's called Cinema Wasteland. It's really cool, but I never heard about it. Yeah. Yeah, I you know I think you your life? they've been out there for a while. Have they been out yeah. for a while? Cinema Wasteland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been going on for I think thirty years. Yeah, because I don't know them. I I reached out. I'm reaching out to all of them now. So if well, you know I'm telling you, they, they do screen Cinema Wasteland. One of the things they do is they have two rooms set up to screen movies the whole time. So they'd be a good one for you to get at um, to show to show the movie when the short is ready for sure. Yeah. And they did it twice a year. And then uh, since you be in Cleveland, we'll, we'll we'll take we'll take you out to get you something to eat and show you around and everything. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I want to go fishing. Fishing? Uh, well, we could probably arrange that. <laughs> yeah. Look at the whole attitude thing. I ain't going no damn fishing. <laughs> I'll go fishing. Yeah, I, I know the fish. Uh, yeah, that's what you're saying. I ain't going no damn fishing. I used, I used well, to I'll go. I won't go no fishing, but I'll take, you to, I'll take you to the fishing spot my dad used to take me to. <laughs> That's right, and just leave me alone for a couple hours. Yeah, that, that, we, that, we, we used to go down there. We never caught shit. We'd go down there, throw the, throw the line in the water, drink beer. He would smoke some weed, and we'd just be there to hang see, out. See, that's, you know, when I was young, I used to go fishing a lot growing up in Florida because there's so many places to do it there. Yeah. Um, we'd always bring a cooler full of beer, so if we didn't catch any fish, we'd at least catch a buzz. So, <laughs> that's it, yeah. <laughs> But those, that was many years ago. I don't drink anymore. So mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't drink anymore to after this show, right? <laughs> 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 no. Crazy <laughs> drinking and smoking, right? Yeah. Right <laughs> on. So did you um did you have anything else you wanted to plug, Ken? That we wanted to get you know out there. We got the website is well, you know the, the SagosCompany.com. Yeah. What's that? We, you've done well. I just trying to plug that, and you know, just people, you know, them asking for support, and you know, it, spread the word. Oh no, we're gonna so, spread the word. Believe I know, me, I know and you we, guys are, but I'm telling the uh, people. Everybody in the comments, yeah. Everybody, spread the word. You know, spread the word and say buy it. You know, and also when you go and watch the video, if you can write in the comments something about how this is an original thing and how you would like to see something original because I do have some independent investors looking at that and I think it will if it come from the fans as to why you think this is such an original story you know you know please yes. write click the link that's on his website to watch the video with the young actor that he has and then it'll take you to YouTube and then on there leave a comment yep. on there so it'll increase the visibility of that like I it and the subscribe and then when I look again, it wasn't there I wonder uh -huh. if it's there now. I left I a comment yesterday, but I didn't see it. I think it's there now. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah as I was gonna say, I'll, I'll put it up there again if uh, if otherwise. But, everyone... right, so we usually go about an hour, we're about an hour and five minutes. So I'm gonna okay. get you out of here. So okay. uh, took up enough of your time. What's up? No, you didn't take up my time. I took up your time. So <laughs> oh no, it was our pleasure for sure, man. It was, it was an honor to have you on. I appreciate. You're, you're, I you're, you're uh, definitely uh, you're definitely our favorite character from the Nightmare franchise. Yep. So um, and and again, it goes since it's the most popular movie in the franchise. You're probably most people's favorite character. <laughs> well, a very you. very popular opinion. Yes. Thank very you. popular opinion. So, Mr. So, Ryan. Again, Ryan Library. That's your last name, Ryan Library. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> so, all right. So, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And um, th thanks again for coming on. We're going to, th this will be available. It's on YouTube, Facebook right now. And then I usually put the audio version on Spotify for people that might want to listen that way. So, I'll share that out that way. Um, we're going to review the comic when I get it. And then I'm going to order another one to give away in the podcast. Everybody go to the SagosCompany.com. Um, Ken does a lot of stuff for charity, a lot of stuff for um, a lot of – the guy is just a great guy. You really have to – we didn't even talk about it too much, but the giving back, the giving back campaign that you do and sending kids to college. I mean, let, let, let's help a guy that helps out a lot of people. You yeah. know, this guy helps out thousands of kids a year, 300 kids he sends to college, 2,000 classrooms he helped out. Over a thousand kids to college. It's over a thousand now. The last I heard was three hundred. Okay, there we go. And, He's and doing big I things. Send, when I, I send, try to send at least five to ten kids to summer camp every summer. And then the summer camp every it's summer. So he months. does a lot of stuff for the horror community. So us as a community, we got to give back to the guy that gives back. And go to that website, order a comic book, order a poster, and uh, yeah, and let us know what you think about the comic book. And Ken, again, I'm going to thank you. Thank you for coming on. And uh, when, when the short comes on, we're going to have you on again, and we'll talk about this all over again. All right, brother? All right. All right. Take love it easy, guys. Go and ahead. And Socrates, you got to love me more. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming on and commenting and showing up, showing out. And uh, and uh, we're going to have this up on Spotify. I'm going to get out of here so I can go watch my Browns hopefully clinch a playoff spot. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Anything you two want to add? Jared? That was awesome. That's all I'm going to add. Thanks That's for awesome. On, okay, man. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah. Yeah, I had Rick, a great time. Rick was like, there's no way we can do this without inviting Jared. <laughs> uh, he <laughs> I, knows I, I would have driven to Ohio. Know. Anytime Rick, I get oh, a nightmare guest, different. I got to have him on, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, we've, been, we've been fucking killing it with these guests, man. I yeah. don't know. I'm just getting lucky. So it's going to be hard. To this <laughs> You've been booking them. I, I I don't know how I'm just getting lucky. I think you know. So <laughs> we've had we've had guests from um you know in, in the last month three of the top horror franchises of all time. Yeah, and we yeah we had we've had nightmare guests. We've had Texas Chainsaw guests, and like it or not, Friday the Thirteenth guests. <laughs> <laughs> so um need some I it guests it, it guests would be in heaven for Sean. Oh, I, I, I'll, I'll work on it, lucky, you know. And, lucky ass Sean, the contest winner. Yeah, yeah, I haven't got that in the mail yet. It's still here. Um, it's been busy with the holidays, but it will get there. I'm off all next week. Well, I'm doing. I'm off for my regular job. I'll be doing lift all next week because my Cadillac broke down, so I had to get that fixed. Oh no. Yeah, that sucks. Did you? It's uh, been down for like a week, so I've been like, we've been down to one car, but. Do you have so, uh, <laughs> did, 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 so we'll get that in the mail sometime next week because I'll be out and about. Did Sean It'll get his address to you yet? What's that? Did Sean get his address to you yet? Yeah, yeah I got it. Yeah, okay, I, got it. I, I, I just have haven't, haven't had a time to get to the post I office. I have it just in case, but right on, right on. So, so again, we're gonna get out of here. I'm gonna get over. The game starts at what eight thirty? I might even be able to make it before kick. Yeah. If I hurry up and get the fuck out of here. So, um, anything you need to add, Ryan? Yeah. Um. I'm obviously I'm not rooting against Cleveland. It's just you know the defense is really tough for the Jets. It's really tough for the Browns too. But the Jets' defense has just been so light out, lights out lately. I'm going with a really low score. I'm going to go Jets 16, Browns 9. Hmm. All right. We'll see. We'll and, see. Um, go ahead. And my last name is now Library. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's official. It's official. It's now and you the the shit again. out of him when you knew who she was. He was like, oh, shit. He do know who she is. He did head, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
That way, if I was I like, oh, shit, into, really? <laughs> if I ever run into him and he doesn't recognize me by name or from here, I'll just tell him I'm the guy that knew Edith Head, and I guarantee he'll remember. He'll that. remember you then. I guarantee yeah. that. So, all right. Um, but other than that, there goes the neighborhood. Oh, my God.